guys welcome back to my living room I gave you a little house tour last week so I hope that you all enjoyed that one but today we're switching things up a little bit with a new table a new coffee table it's a very old coffee table that I found on Facebook marketplace and I think it has a lot of potential it is really really unique so let's go ahead and bring that on in and then we will get to some styling you might hear some Legos going on yeah <laughs> and so we'll see how far we can get on this <laughs> Okay, so it's been a few days. So we're gonna clean this table. Gideon is helping now just get any big pieces of dust off. And we're gonna use rag, and then I'll show you my favorite like wood conditioner to really bring out that wood tone. I realized while I was editing this that I never told you guys how much I got this for. I always just like to share prices because I think it can help you guys as you search Facebook Marketplace or go thrifting kind of know what I am comfortable spending. So this was a really, really unique piece with all of this jointery you can see and just the age and the quality of it being like solid wood. And so I did pay $100 for this, which I think is a great price. No, I like that hole. It's cool. Makes it unique. So we're going to use this feed and wax wood conditioner. I've used this a bunch and it smells really good. It's my go-to. So let's put this on it. Okay, Gideon? So Gideon was very, very excited to help me do this project. I probably should have put gloves on both of us, but I did read the back and it said that just to avoid prolonged contact with the skin. So we did wash hands and this is mostly a natural product to my knowledge, <laughs> but if you do it, you might want to wear gloves. It didn't hurt us though. I just wanted to show the difference between this side is conditioned. You can tell that it is really dark. It kind of brings out those wood tones in the grain really beautifully. And then this side has not been conditioned. So you can see how kind of gray toned it is and how it looks almost like it has a white haze on it. So that's why it's important to condition your furniture. Push. Right to the side, Mom. Yeah. Oh, don't hit the table. As the mama of two little boys, I take my job seriously in teaching them how strong they are. So Gideon helped me push this table and he was very proud of having moved it most of the way. Now that we're expecting baby number three, I also do need him to help a little bit more and he is so, so helpful. So I'm very, very grateful for that. So the previous coffee table that we had here was actually left by the previous owners. So I have been on the hunt for one that fits our aesthetic a little bit more and looks really good with our new couch here that were also a Facebook marketplace find. They are Pottery Barn couches and I got them for a steal of a deal. But I love how this coffee table contrasts their very clean lines and modern look as well as gives it a little bit more lightness since those couches have a much more of a chunky look to them. Okay, so I've got a little haul of the items I will be decorating with. Most of these are thrifted items, but I do have a few new coffee table books that are interior design books that I highly recommend. So we'll talk about those a little bit. So the first thing is this chessboard. I lied, this is not thrifted. <laughs> so my mother-in-law brought this back from Mexico. I have seen people able to find these in thrift stores like over in California. I think Exo McKenna just found one recently, but I absolutely love this piece. It is super heavy, but I think it's just classic, um, but also like very, functional because it can corral items. So I think we will definitely use this. Just reading in one of my interior design books, how important it is to corral items. So have things grouped specifically in like odd numbers on the coffee table. And so I have this tray that I was using on my previous coffee table. I thrifted it. It has like some discoloration here, but it doesn't bother me at all because I always put stuff here. There's always, that's probably why there was discoloration on it. But I think I got this for like three bucks and I love the scalloping detail on it. So I'm not sure if it's gonna work with this table just because of the like shape of it and the knobs here. 
I don't know what these are. It's very interesting. I've never seen anything like this table. So you'll have to let me know if <laughs> you guys like it. I know it's like really, it's really different. So it might not be for everyone. That's okay. I just think she's really cool. So the next thing is this vessel vase thing that I got at a yard sale um and yeah, I just have a fake plant in it I do not do real plants on like touching level with my children just because they are boys and they love dirt so <laughs> those stay up high but this one is just an Ikea little plant and I like the way that it kind of lays and drapes on the table so I think we probably will end up using this one again and then for fall I have been just putting this little basket of like felted pumpkins that I got a few years ago at Target and then I thrifted this basket at the bins and then I have this like coaster set that I thrifted I don't put anything on the coffee table that I'm not okay with my boys grabbing because I have two little boys so that's just the reality of right now but I mean one day down the line I would love to have like little brass figures and statues and like vases but that's not happening yet <laughs> so let's talk about these books that I got so this is the first one um I'm not sure if anyone has heard of her because she's like a little lesser known than the other two that I will share so this is by Carly Summers. If you follow her on Instagram, she shares a lot of her personal story. And then this book is a collection of personal stories from people that she's interviewed, as well as like inside their homes. So this book I love because it shows collections, like how people have actually put their collections aesthetically, like made them beautiful. It's not like a picture perfect, like designed, like ready to list home you know like the other ones usually are they're very much more like sterile i shouldn't even say that it's sterile but they just don't have as much like clutter around but this book i love how it just shows how normal people live beautifully and it has some beautiful stories in it so i highly recommend that one i haven't taken off the cover of this one even just because the outside is even so beautiful but i usually do take the cover off and the inside is really beautiful as well i'll link all of these down below and then I have some ones, I didn't even know this one was in here. This one is one of Dominic's. I think he actually thrifted this one, but that'll go underneath the more pretty one. This one is Rescuing Eden. It is really cool. It has a bunch of, I don't think I've ever shown this on the channel actually. It has a bunch of gardens. This is different than the garden book that I showed um, a few weeks ago that I got at the bins. This one is Historic Gardens and how they have rescued them, brought them back to their like Eden like state. And so this one is really beautiful. And I love the color of it with our like blue toned rug. So the last two are my new ones. Um, oh, I'm so excited for this one. This one just came in the mail recently. Um, it was, we pre-ordered it. My mom got me these new ones for my birthday a few weeks ago. And so this one is Call It Home by Amber Interiors, my personal favorite interior designer. And this just goes through all of these homes. These were not like restored homes, which I have a heart for like restored homes. But most of these, I believe were like new builds, but they've added so much character. And so I have loved paging through here and just reading about her like theory for doing things. And then if you are brand new to interior design, Art of Home by Shay McGee. So I'm sure you've seen like Studio McGee at Target, their furniture line, and then like the Dream Home Makeover show on Netflix. This book is really good because it is like an interior design handbook almost. So she goes through homes that she has designed. And so it just shows like those beautiful pictures. But then in the back, she goes through specifics on like a guide to kitchen styling and kind of gives like very, very basic tips. And then what I really loved was like lighting height. So you can see like she gives examples oh, for over this type of seating arrangement. And if you have this type of ceiling height, then you need certain distance and certain size lights, those things that they do really matter. And it sometimes that can be a really expensive mistake. Um, thankfully, I like looked up this stuff before choosing these things in our home. But this way is really good to know. And so that she also has all of these beautiful colors in here that I guess are her like favorite, her go-to colors. I mean, even for like the color black, would you believe there's that many different types 
of black. <laughs> so there's definitely, I would definitely believe it for white because white has like so many different undertones. I'm a little suspicious of black, but maybe I just need to train my eye. <laughs> so let's put these all on the table. We're gonna try some different arrangements. Maybe I can give you guys some ideas too. So of course, styling is a personal preference. Some people might just like a clean coffee table and that is totally fine with, you know, no clutter on it. But I like having some stuff on the table, um, but <laughs> there is a right way to do it in a way that can look a little bit more messy or cluttered. As a general rule, you want to stick to odd numbers, typically three for the size of an average coffee table, and then do as much variation as possible. So when that comes to height, textures and scale of the objects whether it's a really chunky item or a more wispy item okay i'm really liking this i'm following all the rules here so i have three like an odd number and then different sizes so tall medium or medium short and then the books are at different levels as well. You wanna have as much variety as possible. And I like the way that the books are angled different ways, <laughs> directions, because it kind of makes this, like makes sense. Like this, this side is a little bit bigger. It just makes sense here. But I wanna try that tray because I do love that tray. And I don't know if it'll fit on here with this. So I might have to choose between them. <laughs> This is just so much less interesting to me. So I only have two arrangements here and then there's only really two heights because it's this one, two. So that is proving the point that you need three things. So I think we're gonna go back to the other way. Okay guys, I really, really love how this turned out. So I hope that you all enjoy this table. It is really unique. If you know anything about it, please let me know because they don't, they didn't even know what material it was made out of, what wood. <laughs> it was obviously wood, <laughs> but they don't know what type of wood it was. They just knew that they bought it in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I'm very curious about it. And I am just happy that I could add a very unique piece to my home. So I hope that this gave you some ideas for coffee table inspiration. And I will see you in the next one. Have a very blessed week. Bye, guys.